Good evening. It is good to be with you tonight and thought I'd share some time with you and talk with you. And uh, it's great that you are here. I, I feel very blessed to be able to uh, have this time to be with you tonight. And as we uh, gather for this, we uh, want to ask God to bless our time t together. I see Dana there. Hi, Dana. And uh, uh, hopefully we have a, a nice uh, group that gathers together as we share this time of devotion. As we get started, I'll try a song. I know I've been playing guitar a lot, but uh, it's kind of what I do, I guess. And uh, there's a song that was in my mind the other day. I didn't do it, but I thought, oh, it might be good to do that one. We're going to um, have the song Give Thanks. I'll try it anyways. Here it goes. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for me. And now, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. Give thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, as we gather together, I might have missed some, but hi, Lori and Cheryl and Bonnie and Karen and everyone else that might be watching. I can only see a few on my screen at any one given time. It's great to be with you tonight. And I was kind of wondering about tonight and how I might approach it and a little nervous, to be honest with you, singing and talking about giving thanks, I wondered if it might not seem like I don't know about the pain that people are feeling and all of the emotions that people are feeling and the news that is earth shattering and maybe more distressing are the things that we don't know and they can't tell us on the news and they're might not seem like there are answers right away for some of those questions that people might have. And even though I don't understand what some people are going through, what many people are going through, I know that there is a lot of hurt out there and a lot of worry and, and a lot of fear. I see it on people's faces. I feel my own fears and my own worries. And so, yes, uh, I know that to be brutally honest, this is, is incredibly difficult. And yet, I still want to talk to you about giving thanks. Oh, hi, Brett, also. Uh, you're very welcome. And um, as, we, uh, as we think about giving thanks uh, in the midst of a situation, and we don't even know when that situation is going to be over, Instead of worrying maybe about, well, what do people think about giving thanks? I thought about this. Why do we give thanks? Even when there seems to be very little to give thanks for. If we just look at the problematic 
pandemic landscape that seems to surround us on every side, there doesn't seem to be many reasons to give thanks. But what if we were to look beyond? Not in a way that ignores the challenges that we face, but in a way that knows that there is more than the challenges that we face. There is more to life than our problems. Hi, Andrew. Um, there is more to life than we can see with our eyes. There is more to life than we can even imagine. And though we can't see him, hi, Denise, um, even though we can't see God, he has revealed himself to us. And we know that he loves us because he has spoken to us in his word. And as strange as it might seem, right in the middle of the season of Lent, I'm going to talk about a post-resurrection appearance of Jesus. I think it's one of my favorites. Uh, and this is, hi, Tim, uh, when Jesus was on the road to Emmaus with those disciples after Jesus rose from the dead. And I thought I'd just share that passage. If you want to get your Bibles out to Luke 24, uh, chapter 13 through 35, you can do that or you can just listen. So it's Luke 24, 13 through 35. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? Right? And we've seen that people walking down the road. They're doing that more often now than before. Hi, Lori. And as people walk down the road, what are they doing? They're talking with each other about all the news, all the events that, that we're going through together. So it is just the same after the crucifixion of Jesus. Here are these two disciples walking and talking together, a picture we see over and over again throughout the day, each day. And... <clears throat> So Jesus confronts them. He asks them this question, uh, and they stood still, it says uh, in verse 16 and 17, looking sad. Then one of them named Cleopas answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? Now, can you imagine someone like on the street coming up to you and saying, well, what is this coronavirus you're talking about? You get the, the sense of, of, of shock when they don't realize that, that, that Jesus is, quote, in on the secret. And uh, so uh, they, they, of course, uh, proceed to tell him uh, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Ah, Brianna, yeah, I, I think it's a surprising comparison to, to think about this encounter, but, but hang on, there, there's something even more. Hi, hi, Ashley. Okay, and so what we have here, hi, Brandon is that Jesus is appearing to these two disciples. It is after Jesus rose from the dead. They don't realize that it's Jesus. Jesus acts as if he doesn't know what they're talking about. And they try to tell him and 
out comes all of their disappointment and their dashed hopes. And Jesus responds in verse 25 of Luke chapter 24. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he had interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly saying, stay with us for it is toward evening and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table, with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them, and their eyes were opened. And they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose the same hour and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. So, as we think and talk about giving thanks. I want you to consider what you just heard and how the disciples that were with Jesus on that road, hi Alex, how the disciples that were with Jesus on that road were in the midst of their sorrow they did not yet recognize Jesus. Still, Jesus opened the scriptures to them. And after it was all over, after they had recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread, what do they say? They don't say, oh, now our hearts are burning within us. They ask themselves the question, weren't our hearts burning within us? Even before, they knew it was actually Jesus with them. Even while they were in the depths of despair, still their hearts were burning within them. So, if those two disciples who did not yet, yet recognize Jesus, who were feeling as low as you could feel, if they still had their hearts burning within them, can't we as believers in Jesus Christ still give thanks even when things are turned upside down? I believe we can. You know, in, in, in the Middle Ages, when artists would depict this scene of the um, disciples on the road to Emmaus, they would often paint Jesus wearing a floppy hat to disguise himself. Hi, Barb. What if, <laughs> what if right now, as we're going through all this, Maybe some aren't recognizing Jesus in the midst of all of it. Hi, Sarah. All of us are feeling pretty low sometimes, maybe as low as we've ever felt. But consider this, Jesus is with us, floppy hat and all. And for that, we give thanks. One day we'll look back on this and maybe we, hi, Amy, maybe we, like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, after <laughs> words can look back 
and think how Jesus was in our midst and how he opened to us the scriptures and ask ourselves the same question. Weren't our hearts burning within us during the days of that COVID-19? Then knowingly we can look at each other and nod in affirmation. And so, tonight, my challenge to you, and if you want to share uh, a reason to give thanks, just something small or big that you're thankful for, feel free. I'm going to share with you, I'm going to go through the alphabet. <laughs> now, I know this is a bit of a risk because some people have done this, like have gone through the alphabet saying something they're thankful for for each letter in an attempt to go to sleep. I'm not trying to put you asleep, I'm sure, but I thought it might be a good exercise in giving thanks. So, so pretty quickly here, I'll go through my list of things that I'm thankful for. And never mind the clock behind me, I never uh, set it ahead for daylight savings time, so don't think that your clock is wrong. It is mine that needs adjusting. Anyways, uh, here are the things that I am thankful for based on the alphabet. It's the ABCs of giving thanks. A is for appliances. Now that the family's all home and there are more chores, it sure comes in handy to be able to put things in the washer and dryer and get it taken care of that way. B is for a bed to sleep in. On the radio, I heard that, that they're talking to mayors of cities about the problem of homelessness. And we think of all that homeless people and others who are not so fortunate as us are going through during this crisis. C is for City Hall. Well, why City Hall? Well, there you can get absentee ballots and they had the open books there today. But in addition to that, we, we had a meeting together. It was 10 people or less and we kept our social distance, so don't worry. But uh, as part of that meeting, I was able to be with some of the other um, clergy in the area who represented other faith communities in addition to our own. And one thing that we were doing, hi Audra, is that we were trying to come up with a plan. Now, a lot of people are kind of struggling with, well, what can we do? And I'm really thankful to say that when the the different clergy got together today there at City Hall and other communities of faith and our own were represented there. Um, it had to be a small meeting because you can't have big meetings. But even among our small group of about four or five, uh, we are working on a plan now and hope to get it up within the next week of having a helpline for those that are in need and just need someone to talk to. And we, we're trying to get that put together. And by God's grace and with his help, we'll be able to do that and hopefully provide a, a vital resource just for, for the people in, in the Marshfield area to have someone that they can talk to if they need to, or if they even feel like it and want to talk with someone, they, they know where they can go. Maybe someone that doesn't have a family of faith or isn't connected to a church home is just kind of out there on their own. That's what we want to be able to accomplish. So thankful for what happened at City Hall today. Also dreams, dreams for what life will be like post COVID-19. You heard a little bit of my dream uh, that at, together after it's over, we will be able uh, to say together, uh, we're not our hearts burning within us. Also for electricity, that goes along with the appliances and not to be um, glib about it, but you know, going back a hundred plus years ago to that 
1918 pandemic that we're all uh, more aware of, I think, now, the H1N1 pandemic. Uh, one third of the homes in the United States didn't have, or only one third did have electricity. Two thirds at that time didn't. And that's right about the time when, when houses were getting electricity put in, and after 1920, things changed. But uh, I can't imagine what that was like. F is for faith, and that is what pulls us through all the hard times. Faith in a loving and forgiving God who gave us his son. Okay, G is for God. Eh, that's super easy. It's maybe especially for a pastor to say such a thing, but for any of us, really. But just take a moment and stop and think about how amazing our God really is. Just get lost in that thought for, for just a little while. H is for heroes, not the kind you see in the movies, but the kind you might see in the grocery store. Noticing an elderly person having difficulty, having dropped something on the floor, not able to pick it up. I, well, income tax deadline being moved. <laughs> I think that's a good thing. Uh, J is for just breathing taking a deep breath and calming oneself. Sometimes that is a pretty important thing to do. K is for kids, my three amazing kids, Clarissa, Joel, and Andrew, and, and really all the children of our congregation. But f f speaking of my own children now, each of them is, is so unique and wonderful. I'm so proud of them all, and what a blessing they are. L, I'm thankful for laughter. It's okay to laugh, even now, really it is. Let yourself see the joy in life's moments. It's still there to be found. M is for mom and dad. I heard that my mom and dad were okay, and that is something to be thankful for. N is for new day, each one that God gives us. O is for others. We may have to stay six feet apart, but now we can still understand just how much we need one another to pull through this together. P is for police, firefighters, doctors, nurses, and anyone in the medical profession that bravely goes to work each day. Talk about heroes. Q is for quiet. Maybe it was 2.30 in the morning the other day, but quiet times are still golden. To go along with that, R, I'm thankful for rest after a long day, being able to rest, knowing that the God who made us and the God who saved us neither slumbers nor sleeps, but continues to care for us. S is for still. No, not the kind of still that makes moonshine. I mean, doing things even if you need to do them in a different or creative way and if you are into running, you know that all the races are canceled. And while I can uh, even get outside yet and and run, I thought I wasn't going to do this, but um, but I'm going to still <laughs> uh, do my own half marathon tomorrow, God willing, and 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 think about the as I go the seven miles out and the seven miles back of that seven miles uh, that were traveled by the disciples uh, headed back from Emmaus uh, to tell the, the 11 disciples what had happened to them, how they had seen the Savior. T is for uh, taking time for people and people taking time for me, just like we're doing right now. Dan, uh, thank you for joining us also, and Denise uh, for uh, including him in on this. Definitely very good to see you. You is for understanding. I'm thankful for that too, as in learning to understand your, oneself and others better. V is for visiting. I'm thankful for this visit with you now. W, well, wife, of course. I love my wife, Karen, and she loves me, and God has given us a beautiful marriage, and this is the reason I asked you, Karen, how long we've been married. Uh, that has lasted for 32 years. Sometimes it's hard for me to do the math in my head, 
Uh, Karen's super patient with me too, even when sometimes it's not so easy. Ah, X. I bet you thought that would be a challenge for me, but actually it's not such a difficult challenge. There are only a few words that start with the letter X, but I'm thankful for my son, Andrew. He was able to get his X-ray done and his cast removed and a new one put on. Uh, one dare not take that kind of medical care for granted, to be sure. Uh, and uh, this will be his last cast that he has to wear after breaking his ankle. Things are healing well, so we're very thankful uh, for that. Why is for you, and you know who you are. This includes you, Pastor Andrew, and you, Tammy, and Dana, and our Dean, and the whole staff at Christ Lutheran, and, and all of you uh, that are, are such a, a big part of my life. And last but not least is Z for the zoo, which closed down is true, but it did so voluntarily and to keep people safe. And uh, I think that's a good example of that we all have of watching out for those around us and we can still do that. Well, we can still drive around the pond too and see some of the birds as they come back during spring migration or even just look out the window and see God's creation and the beauty of this world that he has made. So, ah, Brandon, very good. I'm thankful for the internet too and uh, how you are able to work at home and stay safe and be with family and how we can all gather as church right now. Definitely. Thank you. Well, those are some of my thoughts for the night centering around giving thanks. And I do thank you all for joining me and we'll close with a little prayer. We pray. Heavenly Father, we pray to you through Jesus Christ. We ask you to hear us for his sake. Dear Jesus, as we come in prayer tonight, we also say those words, don't we? Stay with us, for it is evening. And so we pray that you would stay with us, knowing that you have promised to do so. Stay not only with us, but with all of our loved ones tonight as well. And stay with those who have to work to protect and keep and care for the public safety as well. Be with the restaurants and the workers at restaurants that are doing all of those takeout orders and manning all of those drive throughs running back and forth from one car to another. Be with all of those who are making sacrifices so that we can try to stay as safe as we possibly can. We place tonight and our worries and cares and concerns and the weight of the world that we sometimes feel upon ourselves. We place that all on you. We trust you. We know that you are with us. And yet we still pray in that confident hope, even rejoicing and give, giving thanks for it as we do. Yes. Jesus, stay with us, for it is indeed evening. Amen. God be with you and bless you all tonight, keep you in his gracious care, sending our love to you and reminding you, however you are able to tonight, to still give thanks. Bye, we'll see you later.